Next into the tank are entrepreneurs with a business profiting from competitive thrill seekers. Greetings, sharks. My name is Brad Scudder. And I'm Rob Dickens. We're from Boston, Massachusetts. Our company is Rugged Races, and we're seeking $1 million for 10% of our company. So what is Rugged Races? We operate a popular 5K obstacle course race series in 20 cities across the country called Rugged Maniac. At our events, participants of all ages, all genders, all shapes and sizes will complete a challenging running course featuring 25 epic obstacles. But these aren't the pop-up kitty obstacles you'll see at our competitors' events. At Rugged Maniac, participants will climb over towers of shipping containers, rocket down in 100-foot water slides, crawl through tunnels of mud, and even jump over fire, all while running through a combination of forest, fields, ski slopes, and even motocross tracks. In short, Rugged Maniac strikes the perfect balance between fun and physicality with our award-winning courses and our day-long festival. So which one of you sharks is ready to get rugged with us? And just to show you what we're all about, We've got this video clip right here. Wow. I didn't even know you existed, but I know about your competitor. I mean, like Tough Mudder? <laughs> How are you different than that? We're, we're different in this sense. Basically, Tough Mudder is a 12-mile course, right, with about 20 obstacles. We have 25 obstacles over three miles, so it's more about the obstacles and less about the running. And being a three-mile course, it's much more accessible to the general public than something like a 12-mile course. Are you saying be. this is a tamer version of that, something that Barbara would do? Oh, I could handle the 12 miles. It's this little short guy over here that wouldn't have a <laughs> shot at it. Well, we get people of all shapes and sizes at our events, truly, from 77-year-old guys to, uh, you know, mother-daughter teens, 14-year-old and up. Is it more workout or more party? We think we strike an excellent balance between the workout and the party. Because it's a shorter race, it takes, you know, an average an hour, a little bit more to finish. People are, are exhausted, but they're still exhilarated. Do people bring alcohol? No. Would no, you sell no, it? No, yes, we sell alcohol. It's a you big sell outdoor alcohol? It's a big oh, outdoor yeah. festival. Wow. Pump, pound, puke, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. It's a, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's a fun right. event. So what are sales going to be this year? This year, 4.2 million. Wow. wow. And how many See courses? Him. 20 cities nationwide. How much out of the 4.2 did you profit? A million dollars. But next year, without investment, we're projecting 6.5 million in revenue, 2.2 million in profits. Talk about the industry. There's some monsters out sure, there. Sure. You know, what's the difference? So basically, you've got you got two kind of at the top: the Warrior Dash 5K, Tough Motor, 12 Mile. And why have they gotten so much bigger than you guys? First movers in the market. And how big are they, Rob? How big are they? They have like 40 events. 45 events. events but in country. terms of revenue, take a guess. How big would they I be? I think they're about 30 million. So would you guys say this industry is about 100 million a year? Much oh, larger. More than that. Rob, what are, you, what are you gonna do with the one million? We've, uh, we've, we've taken that money and invested it in other brands that we own. Um, what a, so, no, wait, what wait, 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 <laughs> wait. No, no, what are we gonna do with the one million dollars that we would get from you? Yes. Sorry, what million oh. were you talking about, Brian? I thought you wanted to know what we did with our profits. Yeah. Well, we want to know that, okay. too. Oh. All right, great, what did you do with the one million in profit? Let me show you exactly what we've done with that other money. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's see, see it. it. Here it is. Oh, you guys are doing these things? It's so stupid. Ah. <laughs> That's a great idea. Rob, explain to me what I saw. You saw running with the bulls. Okay. Here in the US. Anybody get hurt? We had some minor injuries, a couple of concussions, a broken arm, the injury <laughs> rate. <laughs> People paid for this? Oh yeah, about the same price as Rugged Maniac, about $50. But is that part of this deal? It That's can a be. separate company. That we separate. Oh, separate lawyers, lawyers. Have you never lawyers. seen the show? Greedy, greedy yeah, pig. Yeah. I give you a million dollars. I don't. I don't get to wet my beak on the bull deal. No. Of course are we you, get are the you bulls. Guys kidding? No. no. Of course Come on. that's not going to work. You can't be serious. They're full of bull. I give you a chance to change your mind. <laughs> okay. Well, we would want more money if you get involved why? in the bull. So the bull run is, is a separate entity. All right. Why don't we entertain it? How much more would it be to $2 be Two million dollars for ten percent of the bull run. Two million for the bull and one million for the, for the rugged? Yeah. So three million bucks gets 10% of both. Yeah. Brad, what are the sales in the second company? 280,000 at the first event. But do, do you realize that your expertise is not 
rugged maniac. Your expertise is in putting on adventure events. The bull run is just another variant of this same That's thing. That's exactly right. And it's, so the growth potential with this company is not just within Rugged Maniac. Guys, what's the cash flow going to be next year in, under your optimistic scenario for both companies? I mean, we think it could be a $20 million event this year. Guys, I like the business, but if I come in and give you money, and all of a sudden it's like, where's Brian and Rob? <laughs> oh, they're chasing the bulls, right? What am I going to say to you as an investor when I'm not getting your full attention? I want a piece of the bulls. <laughs> no kidding. No, that's not what I'm going to say. I'm going to say they can die, right? I want a return on my investments, or I'm suing your ass because you have a conflict of interest. No investor says, oh, the existing business is dying. Sell me a piece of the new one. No, you don't do that to investors. You align your interests with them 100%. When you start talking about a million dollars, you don't screw around. Right. That's right. a real investment, Rob, sir. the other the, the element for me, I love the idea. I also really love the fact that you're building a customer base for the other events that you can hold later on. For me, they're together. Here's an offer for you. Sure. Both businesses combined. I'll give you 1.5 million for 25% of the entire thing. Okay. Is that the only offer that we have? Mark, you said you were interested? You no, I'm very, I, I love the one business. If, if I didn't know about this other business, I'd probably make an offer right now. Sure. Right? But I want to hear what you say to Rob. I think I'm giving I, you I a fair I know, offer. I think the business is worth, what, six times EBITDA? 1.5 times revenue, roughly? Right. And I'm pricing in. I think that's generous. I'm pricing mm -hmm. it in because I see the upside in the other business. Okay. Asking for $1 million for this business was already challenging. Having another agenda and another business on the other side. My gut feeling is, my instinct is that no matter what, I would be screwed working with you. I wouldn't trust you. I'm out. Okay. Thank you for your consideration. You know, a funny thing happened to me watching you here today. Uh, you came out here, I thought, what good looking guys. Man, they look the part. What a great video. But then somewhere along the way, the surprise of the bulls, and oh yeah, we'll wrap that into the deal. And I don't think maybe you intended it that way, but for some reason, you lost my trust. But either way, I'm out. Sorry to hear that, but we thank you for your consideration. Well, guys, you have, you have, uh, we have an offer, one, you have an offer on the table. Yes, we do. Uh, what are you going to do? An offer that's lower than what we had wanted, but... No, let me make you an offer higher than what you want. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, uh... Anyone else want to throw an offer in the ring? I'm still listening. Well, Mark, your concern is that you, you want us I, to focus no, all our energies on no, one. No, no, it's not that. You came in and you tried to sell us one business and you separated the two. You're overvaluing the other business, in my opinion. And if you have such a uh, high opinion of that business, that's probably where a lot of your attention is going to be. And as an investor, I don't think it's worth the, the value that you're signing to it because you've had one event for $200,000. Mark, are you saying my value is too high? Yes. Wow, now Mark's making me nervous about, am I overpaying? 1.5 million, 25%, that gives you about a $6 million value for the combined businesses. The longer we wait, the, the less comfortable I'm starting to feel. Let me uh, cloudy the waters a little bit here and well, maybe I, give I, you a... I, hang on, Robert. You may want to hear this. I think your offer should be for 33 a third. You become a third partner with these guys. And then I'd go in 50-50 with you. <laughs> hmm. I'm good with that. I like going up to one third. 1.5 million for one third of the combined businesses. Okay. I'm with you, Uncle Kevin. Yeah, I thought you might be, because I think you did overpay. <laughs> Rob, isn't it interesting what's happened? You had an offer at here. Now we're here. Sure. The longer we stay here. So what I would be willing to do is 1.5 million, but it's for 25% of the two companies combined. Okay. We're going to go discuss this, consider both offers, and come back. I think there's a lot of benefit here to partner with these guys. I'm not sure.
sure what there is to discuss, Mark. You made a better offer than we did. Yeah, Mark made the same as your initial. The challenge is when they come back, do you drop this dead weight right here and go back to your initial offer? Then you're overpaying. I don't think they're gonna take either offer. Oh, I think they will. Okay, gentlemen, let's summarize what's happened here. You have two distinct offers. The first from Mr. Cuban is for $1.5 million for 25% of your company. Which, by the way, was the exact same offer I you made, had, yeah. and then he spent half an hour telling you how bad your business is. I know, I know. The <laughs> other offer is for the same amount of money for 33 and a third of your business. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? We went out there and discussed it. We'd, we'd like to eventually strike a deal with you. We wanted to come back in and say, listen, we do $2 million for, for the 25%. Instead of doing that, we'd like to split it in the middle and go 1.75. Deal. Deal. All right. Wait. Oh, you oh, got to work, baby. Looking forward to it, right? Looking forward to it. Absolutely. We'll make some money. Who you lose out? But Robert, why did you do that? Well, thank you for your consideration. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Fired up. We are very excited. We took that offer from Mark because we realized that Mark offers more than just money. Mark offers his experience, he offers his connections. You know, only great things can come from it. Well done. Uh, 1.75 for 25%. I'm actually surprised that they came down in the valuation. Mm. <sighs> Next up is a stylish way to relax. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm the Chief Enthusiasm Officer. <laughs> and I'm Joe, and I'm the Chief Relaxation Officer. We're seeking $400,000 in exchange for 7% of our company. Wow. Between the emails popping up in your inbox, 24-hour news blaring from every screen, and constant pinging interruptions from your smartphone, we're all feeling more overwhelmed and stressed out than ever. We're all sick of feeling busy, hectic, and rushed. And our solution to this frustration is not another app or gadget. Our solution is the world's most ridiculously comfy hammock. <laughs> Introducing Yellow Leaf Hammocks. At Yellow Leaf Hammocks, we've perfected the hammock for the modern consumer. We've conquered every obstacle from creating a cocoon-like, no wobble design to a shockingly soft yarn, so you won't get a rope burn when you're trying to relax, and they're completely weather safe. Now, we're breaking the boundaries of relaxation with our new invention, the Hammock Throne. The Hammock wow. Throne is an indoor-outdoor hammock chair that makes it possible to relax absolutely anywhere. With the hammock throne, you have a gorgeous piece of furniture that you can put out in your living room, on your tiny balcony, or even in your office. It extends back to create a full-length hammock, large enough for a seven-foot person, all within a diameter of just three and a half feet. Wow. And it swivels 360 degrees, uh -huh. so you can angle it <laughs> oh, to gaze cool. out the window, or relax while you watch Shark Tank. <laughs> First, we perfected the hammock. Now we brought it into your living room. So, sharks, who wants to make the world a better place and join us in our quest to build a relaxation empire? So, on the tables in front of you are specially selected hammocks. Oh. Uh, if you open these up, and first thing, you want to look at the label. They're all signed by the woman who made it. Um, we're a social enterprise. I like that. Yeah, they're all... Where do you uh, make them? We work with moms in rural Thailand to create high-wage jobs. What do they cost? What do you sell them for? The ones that we just gave you guys are a classic double. It's our top selling size. They retail for $199. Ooh, that's not bad. Our current line ranges between $149 and $299. The $199 hammock, how much do you pay for it? $44 is our landed cost. So what is an average hammock made out of something like this? What is that cost? You can find a hammock for $30 on Amazon, to be perfectly you honest. It's not it gonna, it's you know? not gonna feel like this. It's not gonna look and like Rachel, this. And Rachel, how much is the contraption? So this is the brand new hammock throne. This is our high-end hanging solution that we've just introduced. It's the That's first your of product. Many. You made yeah, this. We designed yeah, this. we did. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this one is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,200. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, wow. wow. But it's an indoor piece of furniture. Here's See, that you. seems like a lot. Tell us the story of how you got started yeah. while you here. Our inspiration to start this was to literally end poverty in really vulnerable communities in the developing world. The idea for the company started when I initially went on a backpacking trip across Southeast Asia. Without me. Aww. <laughs> uh, we were living together in Boston at the time. 
and I stumbled across a hammock on a remote island and I was immediately struck by how soft it was. I was really impressed with the quality and I started asking some questions and learned that it was woven by this Hill Tribe community. It was part of an economic development program to help this Hill Tribe group out of poverty and I was really struck by that in Thailand. Yeah. So I went to this community and I got to meet the actual weavers and hear their stories and I learned that this community that started making the hammocks with the help of an aid worker had been previously in debt slavery and the thing that really struck me was a lot of people kept coming to this community asking to join the program, but they were being turned away because there weren't enough sales. And I thought, well, we can start a little hammock company and you know, provide enough jobs in this region. So I came home with a backpack stuffed full of hammocks and I came home to Rachel. I was thrilled that my boyfriend <laughs> wanted to quit his finance job and start a hammock company, as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally I was like, yeah, honey, great idea. <laughs> What are your sales? This year, we're gonna hit 1.3 million. Wow. Last year, we did 860,000. Your sales are primarily online? It's about 50-50 between a combination of direct-to-consumer sales through our website, as well as strategic partnerships. A big part of our early wholesale was kind of scattershot patio stores. We took a step back from that to focus on strategic partnerships. Who? Uh, it's we're Virgin uh, Voyages, which is Virgin's new cruise line business. Yep. So Virgin Voyages will be putting yellow leaf hammocks in every single balcony of every single cabin. What price do you get from them for these? They, they pay our wholesale price, but they'll also be um, retailing them. So they will be on the room service menus in the, on the, in the cabin and on the stores. The retail store is projected to more than double our current business. So you've got to be profitable then, right? Last year on uh, 860,000 in revenue, our uh, net income was 110,000. That's great. After paying yourself? After paying ourselves, yeah. John, Rachel. Yes. Here's my offer. Bam. That are the five sharks here. I probably have the most credentials about building social impactful businesses. So I understand the challenges you're facing. I really love a lot of what you stand for, but you have a $100,000 profit with a crazy $5.7 million valuation. So my offer is as follows, and it's an explosive offer. I want 33% of the company. Yeah, I'll give you what? $1 million. Say yes or no, and then it's done. Wow. $1 million, Wait, 33%. Wow. You, you mentioned our profitability on last year. I want to mention our profitability on this year and what yeah, we're doing next year. Yeah, but that's a little wishful thinking, us, right? And I think you would no, get the order. Yeah. So on the 1.3 million that we're doing uh, this year, we're doing 360,000 in profit. One of the biggest things that we're looking to do with this money is we have a huge product roadmap of solutions. Rachel, so we stop started talking here. and take the deal. He's paying you over eight what? times. There might be another that's deal. For you. That's an amazing I, offer. We also recognize that we might not need all of that money right now. Oh. We also oh, might not. What are you doing? Well, we oh. might not. All right, well, hey, hey if we, you don't, we don't need all the money right now, you, I'm going to make you an offer. Are you we give don't, up we don't. We're offer? not prepared to give away that much. Oh, that much oh. Oh. Right. Oh. I mean, I sit here, oh. I listen, I So walk. it's a no. helmet company. It's, it's not I, a Well, listen, he I just wanna, said maybe he doesn't need all that much money. So I will give you an offer. I'll go 400000 for... 20%. <laughs> now, uh, granted, his might be better offer for you. A million dollars for the 25% <laughs> in both of you. I don't want to go to the million. How about 500,000 for 25%? No. Yeah, that, that What's was your counter for 25%? 600,000 for 14%. Oh, wow. wow. I love the idea, and I think you guys are the real deal. Thank you. I will give you the 400,000 for 15 percent. If you take the million dollars from me, you won't need to dilute yourselves again. You, you know might. how much money Kind has raised in its entire lifetime for the business? The total we ever raised in our entire history was $5.2 million. And we, we sell over a billion dollars in sales. I'll teach you and I'll help you run the business in an efficient way. Are you okay with 33% or is that too much for you? I think it's too much. Because What's the maximum that you're willing to do for someone that's gonna really roll their sleeves and help you? We're looking at the future. If you took 33% now, I worry that we would it would hurt us at a subsequent round when we grow. Why? What subsequent round? When I started my business, started with one product, I took out a bank loan, it was about $325,000. I paid it back within a year and I never had to take a loan or bring in an investor again. So listen, I don't think you need to just sit there and take on all these investors and take in a whole ton of money. You just need to be strategically smart and take in the right investor. But you need somebody. That's the bottom line. So I'm gonna change my offer. My offer is this. I'm gonna go $200,000 flat. Then I'm gonna give you a loan of $200,000 at 
I'm going to fund purchase orders if you need them, and I'm going to ask for 17 percent. You may like it, you may not. For but the one person. thing that I can offer oh. is, is I can offer somebody who will hold your hand, take you down the road, do everything that you need. Lord. I care about helping women. I care about helping environment. I care about helping the world, and. I really like the two of you, so I care about helping you. I love you. the two of you. Lori, thank you, you so guys. much. We love you guys. We're making it hard on them. What's the minimum percentage and what dollar do you want? Focus, Joe. You too. <laughs> what do you do $1 million for 25%? Just because I love you. Yeah! <laughs> You're not making a huge difference with the world. We're gonna change some lives. I never thought he'd go down It's never that. happened before in Shark Tank history when someone came in here for 400,000 and walked out with a million. I'm really excited to work with you. I'm gonna so make a huge thrilled. difference. I'm so thrilled. Thank, Thank you. you. Congrats. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who believes there's big money to be made from big scares. I go, there's zombies. Hi, sharks. I'm Melissa Carbone from Los Angeles. My company is 1031 Productions, and I'm seeking $2 million in exchange for 10% of my company. Wow. 1031 Productions is an entertainment company that creates, owns, and produces live attractions in the horror space. Our most popular attraction is the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride and it is not for the faint of heart. Sharks, when you take our hayride, you are entering the pitch black woods <laughs> where demonic forces, lost souls, psychopathic fun are waiting around every turn. <laughs> Just when you think the terror is over, think Again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he likes you. Don't eyeball me. I will kick your tush back to Texas. Got him, Mark. Get him. <laughs> OK, Melissa, you know what's really scaring the crap out of me is your valuation. So $2 million for 10% imputes a $20 million value on this scary hair ride business. Tell us why you're worth $20 million. We do attractions all year long. We have the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, which is our seasonal attraction here in LA. 17 nights. We sell out every single night. We do about $1.8 million right now per October. Whoa. And... Whoa. Wow. 1.8 is really good. In 17 days. In 17, 17 days. days. We have another attraction called the Great Horror Campout that we just launched, which is a summer attraction. The Great Horror Campout is our way of not being a seasonal company. It is an overnight, completely immersive camping experience, horror theme. Oh, no. So it's 12 hours. <laughs> we, ba we, we take 2,000 campers, <laughs> we put them in tents, and we have an incredibly interactive experience oh, that includes amazing. everything from a hell So it's hunt. basically summer camp from hell. Yeah. yeah. 1.8 million in, at the end of the 17 days, what's left? It cost us $1.2 million to produce the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, so I'm left with 600,000 free cash afterwards? Yeah. I mean, it varies year to year because right now we're in a launching new attraction mode. We're launching a New York Haunted Hayride, which is what we're seeking some of this money for. The Great Horror Campout, we're launching it next year in 10 cities up the West Coast. And so therein it's... lies the rub, right? Because they're very, very, very expensive to, to produce and create. Right, well, ca the campouts are cheap to produce. How much advertising and promotion do you do? We spend about $300,000. We do a ton of radio. My background is I, I ran Clear Channel Los Angeles for 10 years. So my wow. um, advertising, marketing, and one of and my other business partner is actually still with Clear Channel. So we know how to make a dollar go really far from a marketing how, standpoint. How many unique individuals come through? The Hayride, yeah. we have we have 50,000 people. We sell out every single night. So this year is our first year. We increased our max capacity to 100,800. We actually are doubling our max capacity this you, year. You sell out every night for 17 days? Every night. That's amazing. 
So can I extrapolate and say that the, it's going to be $3.6 million in revenue this year? Yes, if we sell out. So that means this thing will generate just over a million bucks if everything works, right? Mm -hmm. OK, now, you're an intelligent woman. I'm trying to make the leap now. We have to get back to reality on your $20 million ask. Yeah. Let's give you a fair chance of making a million bucks before tax, OK? Yeah. Yep. That's about 700000 after tax. If I gave you a 10 multiple, you're worth 7 million bucks. How is it that I am going to pay 20 for a $7 million business? If everything goes right, mm -hmm. that's the horror story you've brought here. You've overvalued your business. We've had major entertainment companies in LA who have already given us offers to buy our company, and this is about what they're valuing it. Why are you such a greedy pig? I <laughs> Not greedy. I have lots of lots of high hopes well, for the well, company, and I want to grow where fast. Just because a Hollywood bozo horse. offered you a twenty million dollar valuation, you know what the horror show is? Listen to you argue about valuation all the time. But then why don't you just give her two million dollars and ten percent? I am projecting for the New York Haunted Hair Ride, which hasn't happened yet because it's the same model in LA. We're just plopping it but there. You haven't but done it, it yet. Hold let, on. Go, let her go. Let her go. But go, hold ahead, go ahead. Geographically, it's a different model because it never rains in LA. Listen, I. I I don't agree that your risk analysis is correct. It never happens that everything you roll out is successful day one. That's ridiculous. For me, it is not hard to get lots of people to come to the attractions. The hard part is to make it a great experience so they want to come back. Look, this is all fun and games, but we're talking about money here. I can't, I can't get there. I'm out. Melissa, for you to come close to your projections for next year, Everything has to work perfectly all the time. I don't see you getting to those numbers next year. I know. For me right now, to give you $2 million, I feel it would take a really long time for me to see that back. So for that reason, I'm out. The risk is not as great as you probably would think. I mean, we will launch these attractions no matter what. I know that we can launch them faster by having this money. We can launch them now. I'm an expert in high octane scare. You are? Yes, I can tell you a way to do this much cheaper. Wear a piece of jewelry and walk around where I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> that will give you a high octane Fair scare. Fair enough. Uh, I would just have to insult you with my offer. Um, Go ahead, insult her. That's about what it's worth. <laughs> Throw the offer, yeah. Okay, well then, I'll give you $2 uh -oh. million dollars for 40%. Okay. Mark? Come on, Mark. Is that a yes or a no to him? Um, can I counter? Of course you can counter. Um, $2 million for 20%. I'll take that offer. Done. Really? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Good we have a deal? All take right. It. We have a deal. Wow. Easy breezy. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm wow. so excited.